Hey y'all, Tom, ND3N here, just like it says on the hat, and thanks for dropping by my little shack in the corner for a ham shack chat. This time, I'm going to try to clear up some of the confusion with two modes on the FT991A. I've noticed a few posts on Facebook and other sites where hams who are new to the hobby or just new to the FT991A have asked about the difference between the CW LSB mode and the CW USB mode. The bottom line is that the label just doesn't matter, but the function can be useful. Stick around for a few minutes to learn more and please give me a like. You like me. Having upper and lower beat frequency oscillator or BFO frequencies is actually a pretty new feature in ham radios. The original ham radios were CW only. And even after rigs had voice, <laughs> the CW setting was only CW. CW upper and lower has only been a thing for the last few years as digital signal processors DSPs have become popular. While Yesu calls it CW USB and CW LSB, McKenwood calls it CW and CW Reverse. I'm not sure about ICOM, Flex Radio, or any other manufacturer, but if you own one of these other radios, please share what they call it down in the comments. Now to leave a great comment. The problem is in labeling, in particular with the Yesu. Naming it lower or upper sideband implies that it is somehow related to the sideband modes, which cannot be switched between sending and receiving stations. To illustrate, if you've ever been in the SSB portion of the 40 meter band, or any band below 10 meters, and had your rig set to USB, <laughs> then you know that the LSB signals there are completely unintelligible. CW, continuous wave, right, is just like what it sounds like. That is a continuous, single, unmodulated frequency. Frequency open. So why does it matter? <laughs> the truth is that it really doesn't. It doesn't matter, just... I've put a series of graphics together that will hopefully explain why the label really doesn't matter. The beat frequency oscillator, or BFO, is activated when the receive DSP senses a signal on the receive side. The BFO produces the tone that you hear using the pitch function. I set mine at 750 hertz. Now on the FT991A, you can select any frequency from 300 to 1050 hertz. If you've selected the CW lower mode, the BFO uh, frequency will be lower than your tuned frequency, and higher if you've selected the CWU for upper mode. As mentioned before, CW LSB or USB is not the same as voice LSB and USB. On the transmit side, only the CW carrier frequency is sent with no association to your BFO. The BFO offset frequency is set by the receive side of your rig and internally, which, although obvious, should be noticed is separate from your transmit side. Not the same. Now, all that said, being able to choose your BFO offset can be useful in cleaning up your receive signals. In cases where there is QRN, that's general noise, or adjacent channel interference, which is QRM, selecting the alternate mode can reduce these interfering signals. Now, just a quick brief on those two terms. QRN is generally 
pretty widespread noise. So you can expect minimal, if any, improvement by swapping your offsets. But QRM is usually has a very low width. It's another CW signal that's just encroaching into your band, band pass. Morse code. Uh, and by swapping from upper to lower or lower to upper, you can expect much better results. And by the way, these Q signals can be remembered easily. QRN is natural noise and QRM is man-made noise. I have another video where I discuss menu settings, functions, and features of the FT991A that can be used to clean up your received CW signal. Just follow that link up above and uh, I will also be adding the link to the video description below. Oh, nothing. Just watching another pimple popper video. In this video, I point out that getting rid of noise is as much an art as it is a science. And you'll need to play with the settings to get your best results. In summary, here's a couple of points to walk away with. First, CW USB and CW LSB are kind of misleading labels, but they're only labels. Kenwood calls them CW and CW reverse, which I think is more descriptive, but maybe not optimum. I don't have the optimum name or uh, words. I don't know what ICOM, Flex, Tentec, or any other manufacturer label these, but in the end, they are only labels. You could call them Fred and Barney. Well, now look, isn't that Fred and Barney? And the results and application would be the same. Now, the next point is that while in the grand scheme of things, it really doesn't matter. Uh, after all, hams have done without this feature for many years. It can still be useful to reduce noise, especially the adjacent channel interference. Thanks for dropping by my little shack in the corner for a ham shack chat. Please share. Thanks for sharing. Didn't know. This with your friends in the ham radio community, especially on social media. Please leave a comment. Questions? Comments? Down below. And finally, please give me a like and consider subscribing to this channel. Be sure to smash our like button and subscribe to our channel. This video is where I discuss how to get your best CW receive signals. It's also down in the video description. As always, I'm at your service. I'm Tom, ND3N73 until the next Hey y'all, and I am out.